Good morning, guys. Uh, welcome to our teen service this morning. Um, we believe that um, God has something very good for each one of us, and that's why we're here watching us. Uh, we will begin off with a word of prayer, then I'll invite um, the praise and worship team to take us through the worship. Uh, but stay connected. Remain with us till the end. I can assure you there is, a, there is a wonderful teaching coming along the way. Yeah, so I'll invite Teacher Rose to open for us with a word of prayer, and then we proceed. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much uh, for those of us watching us uh, on Facebook and those of us who are uh, logged in through uh, Zoom. Welcome. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you. We want to bless you. We appreciate you. We want to thank you that indeed you're a good God, my Father, and you've experienced your goodness, oh God. We want to thank you for this day, my Father, that indeed you've given us and we shall be glad in it, oh God. We choose to be glad in this day, oh God. We bless you, we appreciate you, we honor you, oh God. Even as we start this service today, my Father, uh, we just pray, may you go ahead of us, my Father. Go ahead of us, oh God. Go ahead of us, my Father. Even uh, as we enter into a session of worship, we just uh, pray and call upon your presence, my Father. Honor us with your presence. In Jesus' name, we do pray and believe. Amen and amen. Karibuni sana. Asante. Thank you. Praise and worship. Thanks, Amalisa. Um, hi, guys. Um, let's just worship the Lord. Let's worship him for all that he's done for us. Let's worship him and go into a session of where we will be connecting with God. So, oh, I surrender all to you. I surrender to you everything I give to
now let's just worship the lord thank him for all that he's done for us let's all just surrender ourselves to the lord and worship him for all that he has done and for all that he's going to do for us oh lord we thank you for all that you've done we surrender all to you withholding nothing oh lord we give ourselves away to you we surrender ourselves to you oh lord we worship you we praise you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. Let's just worship the Lord for all that He's done. Thank you that He is enough for us. Thank you that He is enough. He is all that we need in our lives. 
Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for everything that you've provided for us and done. Thank you that he is enough, that he is all that we need in our lives. Thank you that he's here with us even during this time. Thank you that he's protecting us and guiding us. For I pray this trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. Wewe Watosha. That is the name of the song. Thank you, Marisa, for such a wonderful moment, just taking us in the presence of God. Barikiwa sana. Uh, now, let's brace ourselves for only teacher Elijah. Uh, he has a wonderful topic to share with us this morning. Yeah, so just grab your notebook, grab a pen, make sure you follow through, make sure you take notes, and I'm sure you'll be blessed. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you. We thank you for the opportunity you've given us to have a fellowship with you, Lord. Uh, we come before you with open hearts, with open minds, with receptive hearts, oh God. We, we receive the correction of your word. We receive the exaltation of your word. Lord, we don't want to leave this place the same way we came. We want to be transformed by the power of your word, oh God. We we receive your word with an open, with an open, uh, with an open mind, with an open heart, Lord. We receive it, Lord. We are the good ground, we are the seed of God, your word fell into and germinated and yielded for the hundred folds. Our lives will not be the same again. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Elijah. Thank you so much. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, Teacher Gideon, for that introduction. And I just want to say that I really loved that choice of song that uh, Marisa has just sung, the last song, which is uh, an always, a meaning uh, is enough. I think that sort of fits the bill, uh, looking at what we're going to discuss today. And um, uh, thank you so much. I also want to welcome all those that are joining us uh, via Zoom and even those on FB. Welcome. Um, I just want to start off uh, on a certain note. Let me just share my screen so that we can launch right into it. Can you see my screen? Are you able to see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Which one are you seeing, me or the slide? We can see the slide, thank you. Ah, super. Well, I, I just want to, uh, I want this morning I want us to discuss something that um, I, I would say will be relevant for us uh, because of uh, what we're going through, which I would say has been a protected situation. We all know that we're in a pandemic situation and um, it's like one thing after the other happening and uh, a lot of concerns around causing anxiety. Uh, people are so distressed in one way or the other. And uh, if you look around, see the things that are happening, I think this, the only hope that we have is God. And that's why I was saying, I really love that particular song that uh, Amarisa sang which uh, implies that God is enough. Even in the current situation, honestly, God is enough. There is no other thing that can take uh, God's place in our lives. And we just need to go back to scripture. We need to go back to him and just reconnect with him. And therefore, my title there is called Fourth Quadrant, which is Adversity Quotient. I will be able to explain myself and what I mean. And in the process, we'll be able to uh, just understand certain things, asking God to help us. And as uh, Teacher Gideon mentioned, uh, and I really like that, that let's prepare ourselves with a pen or a paper. I want this, uh, this particular session or this teaching today to be as interactive as, as possible. And we'll try to uh, do it at our level best to see how we can engage 
and uh, participate. So uh, my anchor scripture there is talking about uh, John 16, verse 33, um, which actually is a scripture talking about Jesus himself, himself talking to the disciples. And if you look at uh, the chronology of this, you know, the context, what uh, came after uh, this particular portion of scripture, the entire chapter 16, uh, Jesus was, you know, actually it's indicated that he actually foretold uh, his death and resurrection when he was telling uh, the disciples some of the things that will happen. And it, actually, it's very interesting when I was looking at it again this morning, the first verse in chapter 16 is, is, is almost similar to the last verse, which is our anchor of scripture. And if I may just read, it's not on screen, but if I may read, Verse 16 is uh, chapter, verse 1, chapter 16 is saying, I've told you these things so that you will not stumble or be caught off guard and fall away. Actually, that verse 1 in chapter 16 also implies that there will be some sort of distress. And also, as we conclude that uh, chapter, as I've said, and this is our anchor scripture, is I've told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. That's the amplified version. In the world, you'll have tribulation and distress and suffering. But be courageous, be confident. Don't be undaunted. Be filled with joy. I've overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. I love that. Just think about it. When Jesus himself, he warned the disciples. And I want to uh, take from this and say, this particular verse also applies to us, particularly in this season. And in whatever season of life, it's, it's a reminder that there will be some distressful uh, times. There will be some times when things do not go according to what we expect. And of course, that will cause us to you know, be stressed out, to be anxious. There'll be some level of suffering. But Jesus is reminding us that we need to be courageous we need to be confident. We need to be filled with joy. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of things that are happening and I'm pro we'll discuss, uh, we'll look into that, that when you think about them, do, do, they do not bring any joy. It's more of sorrow. But I think we, we just need to keep talking about this. And that's what I'm saying. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. We need to get encouraged. I'm sure in, the, in our past sessions, we probably touched on this. And it might not be the first time that any of us is hearing this. But if the scripture itself in Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing. So there's a level of faith. There's an amount of faith that we need to build for us to be able to overcome the uh, trying situations, the trying moments, to overcome some uh, very distressing moments. So we need to talk about these things over and over, over and over, over and over. So um, let me move to the next. Uh, this is just trying to break it a little bit and telling us what can we learn from this scripture. If Jesus is saying in this world you'll face tribulation, in this world, there will be some level of distress. In this world, uh, you will suffer. In this season, there's a pandemic. The health loss. Schools have been shut. And I think this is something that is affecting us directly as teens. And it's interesting. It's not just in Kenya. And I think we need to understand that. It is a global issue, even the issue of children not being able to go to school. And you can actually put it there. In this world, you'll face trouble. You'll not be able to go to school the way you want it. You'll face health challenges. But he says, I've told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. So basically in, in him, um, there's a chance for us. Not actually a chance. It's guaranteed that when we get plugged into Christ himself, into his kingdom, uh, we'll be able to have a amount of peace. So, and through this, we'll be able to overcome the world. I had to look at some definitions here. Uh, remember, my, my, my title there was talking about uh, the fourth quadrant, and it talked about adversity quotient. There are certain things that I want to bring out just to help us understand what I mean. First, uh, let me start off with the, uh, the definitions um, after just that little intro. Adversity is a difficulty 
or an unpleasant situation, a state or instance of serious or continued difficulty or misfortune. This, this, that definition actually uh, explains what we've gone through in the last, uh, let me say six months. The whole world has gone through a very unpleasant situation. Uh, needless to mention, there's been so many lives lost, jobs lost, children not able to go to school, families in distress, a lot of violence as a result of the distress. So it's like one thing leading to the, uh, to the other. And it's just trouble upon trouble. So it's really an adverse situation we've been in. So adversity basically is when you face difficult situations, which I think right now, is most of us, all of us in one or the other, is going through some adversity, is going through some tough time. What about quotient? A degree or amount of a specified quality or characteristic. I know a lot of us have had this time IQ, and uh, we'll look at it. Here we're talking about adversity quotient. IQ, the intelligence quotient. So even that word Q stands for quotient which is actually a, it's, it's, it's a degree or amount of your ability to do certain things uh, in terms of your academics, your ability to grasp certain concepts, your ability to uh, probably manipulate figures, maths, and all that. So in this case, uh, we are talking about quotient basically implies the amount of something, of a quality or a characteristic that we have. So when you combine those two words, adversity and quotient, it basically means, uh, 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 it's now this, it means the second, uh, the, the, the second, the third point right there, which is resilience. In most cases, actually, if, when I was doing my research as I was preparing for this session, when somebody talks about adversity quotient, they have to mention resilience. It's like, well, it's actually the other side of the coin. There's no way you can talk about adversity quotient without talking about resilience. And basically, uh, I'll choose to think that's what is implied in uh, John 16, verse 33, which, which probably say, cheer up, be of courage. So be of courage and overcome the world. Eventually, it means that whatever difficult situation we are going through, we will emerge as conquerors will emerge as winners. So resilience basically means, if this is the first time we are ever meeting this word, is your capacity to recover quickly from a difficulty, from a toughness. So um, it's interesting because honestly, um, when you go through a tough time, one thing that all of us expect is that this thing will, will come to pass. Whatever tough time that you're going through will come to pass. But it's also a function of your ability to bounce back because there are so many people who are giving up, who are losing their minds in this season. So your ability to bounce back is so, so important. And I think we've mentioned it in one of our sessions. And we will go over it again. And that's why I'm saying faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So don't tire listening to me saying almost the same thing over and over. It's just to help us cultivate a certain way of thinking that can pull us through this season, which is so, so important. And I'm not saying myself here, I'm, I'm an exempt in terms of, you know, having to encourage myself. If anything, I'm using this session to encourage myself because, uh, even me, where I'm at, it's not as easy. There are tough times I'm going through, but I need to encourage myself. I need to build my, my adversity quotient uh, to go through, to manage uh, this season. Okay, so uh, let's move to the next slide. So this slide is basically telling us some of those questions that you might have come across and where we're going to lay emphasis. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of the IQ, which I already mentioned which it says is the measure of your ability to comprehend uh, your academic things or uh, what you're being taught in school. You know, whether it's solving maths, memorizing things, you're preparing for an exam, you have to memorize this, recalling, recalling uh, a subject matter, whether it's history for those of us who, who love art or uh, a science thing, chemistry, biology. Your ability to be able to recall what you're taught is, 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 is what we call IQ. And I think this is a very common one. Then there's also uh, the other one, which is called social quotient, 
I'll just rush over it because we need to, uh, we'll, I want us to focus on the key one. Um, is the measure of our ability to, to build a network of friends. I know a lot of us, particularly uh, uh, in our youthful age and throughout our lives, you know, we have uh, a network of friends. We have a number of friends, a battery of friends around us who work with us, support us, who love us and all that. And it's very important to have friends because even during times, uh, no man is an island and actually it's entirely that human beings or it's, it's understood that human beings are social beings. So we need to have friends, families to help us uh, live life or deal with life. So your ability to, you know, the measure of your ability to build a good network of friends and maintain it over a long period of time will determine your social portion. So people who are very good networks, because by the way, networks can actually help in many, many ways, whether it's, it's sorting out life issues, work and all that, your networks are so important. The other one is the emotional quotient. How you, uh, it, it's actually here they talk about character, character building. This is a measure of your ability to maintain peace with others, keep to time, be responsible, be honest, uh, rather be honest, respect boundaries, be humble, genuine and considerate. And again, this is just who you are, your, sort of your integrity, who you are, your integrity has got to do with, are you the same person you are when nobody's seen you? You know, you know, it's so easy to be, to you want to please uh, people when you're around them. But what about when you're, uh, nobody's seen you, are you the same person? So this has got to do with, you know, just your, uh, who you are, your ability to have a good character. But the one that I want to focus on, and that's why I highlighted it is, and I've already mentioned is, the measure of our ability, which is adversity quotient, the measure of our ability to go through a rough patch in life. Think about it. The measure of your ability to go through a rough patch in life. It goes without mentioning that many of us, I can bet many of us, nearly all of us listening to me now, are going through a rough patch in life. And uh, it says a rough patch in life, coming out without losing your mind. Interesting. Where you go through a rough patch, but you don't lose your mind. Many of us are losing our mind. It is not as easy as we think. Many of us are distressed. Many of us are losing their health. Many of us are, are even uh, making wrong decisions because of the stress. In, that, in, a, in a way, they're losing their minds. And instead of right, making a right decision in, uh, when there's so much pressure, they're making wrong decisions. So your adversity quotient determines who, who will be able to give up in face of trouble. And I pray that none of us will give up. And that's why we're having this session, just to encourage ourselves. Um, some of us some of us can actually push uh, to the point you know, where you, you even commit suicide. I'm sure you've heard of cases in the media now where I think I had a story the other day that a lady who, because of the stress that is so much around, I mean, in this season, the lady decided to commit suicide with the kids. It's so sad. It's so sad. But uh, it means that uh, to an extent, the, the AQ at that point, when you commit suicide, your AQ is not as great. So I know most of the time we celebrate your IQs, we celebrate the other AQ, uh, cues, but I think this moment in this season, we need to celebrate, we need to recognize and give it its rightful place, the adversity quotient, which is our ability to, 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 to uh, come through all this season and skate. You know, where we can come out of this season, navigate through this season and come out on the other side stronger. And what does that mean? Um, I would say fair enough, people say EQ, SQ tend to to help us go further in life. Those guys with EQ, that's the social quotient, SQ, uh, social quotient, tend to go further in life. That is good enough because it's probably uh, those who are uh, with, with high IQ but low SQ and low EQ. They might not because, you know, in most cases, as I said, we've celebrated IQ so much. Then again, IQ is emphasized so much in school. All these are fair enough. This is very good. But let's look at the next one. I like this report, and that's why I want us to discuss a little bit. Our spirituality, 
is more or less linked. This I got from, it's not any of my materials. I got it uh, from the website uh, www.willy.com, willy.com, uh, which says that uh, research is showing that our spirituality uh, influences our ability to cope with adversities. So what I'm trying to say here is that your spirituality, which is your ability, your, your, your capability to connect with the God factor. I choose to call it the God factor. The God, the one who created, in, who created us. Our ability to connect with him in, in season and out of season, and particularly in a season like this, will actually help us to, to come out stronger, will actually help us to pull through this season and come out strong on the other side. So it means that your adversity quotient and your spiritual quotient are more or less intertwined. So it, it can also mean that those who are able to pull through a difficult time, it means that their spiritual quotient is high. I don't know how to measure that, and I would really love us to come to a place that we can measure that. But of course, there are other tests that out there to help us measure the adversity quotient. But it basically means that your ability to pull through, as we said, the quotient is the amount of a character that you have, the quality. So your spiritual quotient and, and adversity quotient are so much interface. They're so much intertwined. It's one and the same thing. So it tells us that for us to be able to pull through this season, guess what? Whom do we need to go back to? We need to go back to God. I like that this was actually science that was trying to explain this. I know in most cases, we've always had situations where people say, ah, science and faith uh, are like uh, oil and water. No, science and thought. Science actually tries to explain what God already knows and he's trying to help us understand it as well. So, and uh, there is, when it comes to dealing with everyday challenges, even any catastrophe, our adversity quotient is the most, powerful, the most important thing. Right now, even those with the best IQs, they're not able to provide us with solutions. When you're in distress, they are not, uh, that your IQ will not be able to pull you through. It's important, and I'm not watering down the place of IQ, the place of social quotient, the place, the place of emotional quotient. It's important, but let's get these things right, yeah? Let's just get these things right and understand that God comes first. Our ability to come through is a function of how we connect with God. And um, in the recent times, I know one of the key things that uh, uh, we've been talking about and is affecting us teens directly is the news that was there. Uh, it came out on the July 7th, where we were told, come on guys, 2020 is lost. I don't know how many candidates we have here. I don't know how many, I know, uh, Candidates are much more affected. And you know, right in this season, you'll be talking about psychosocial support that is needed uh, for our candidates because we feel deflated by the news we've had. Imagine telling somebody, you know, all of, a lot of our candidates, whether it's Form 4 or Standard 8, we are preparing to move to the next class, Standard 8, that is to Form 1. And it's so exciting. Uh, the Form 4s, you're preparing to do your exam, final exam, so that you can go into college oh, I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. That's not a very good news for a lot of us. And I think it came like a shocker because a lot of us were expecting that come September, things will shape up and we'll probably go back to school. But listen, here's a situation where not only in Kenya, you've been told one billion learners at home across the world due to COVID-19. And in Kenya, because they're looking at how uh, the trends of uh, COVID is, is, is panning out, uh, it, this thing, is still on the inclining trend and therefore uh, we risk increasing the level of infection if we open or go back to school before the, the year is out. So basically our CS says we will go back to school next year and it means 2020 is lost. That is a source of distress and I know a lot of us are distressed about this. A lot of us is and let me just to be honest is that uh, we are human beings. We are susceptible to a lot of pressure. That is the truth. Whether you are a Christian or not, the pressure will come. Life has a way of catching us on the blind side. And let's just be alive to this fact. So how we respond is what is very important. And that's why I wanted to highlight some of those IQs, just to, or rather the cues. 
just to help us know that there is what we call adversity caution. And it's so important that we stay plugged in because research itself is saying your spirituality has a way of impact or influencing your ability to bounce back. So our ability to bounce back, to pull through this season, is how we are connected to God. And I, I, I beg us, I beg you, listening to me. I even am speaking to myself. I have to stay connected. And my, that slide is just basically telling us that it's not just in Kenya. All these things, it's world, it's global. Schools in many, in, uh, if you talk about schools and based on the news that we got recently, uh, many schools, many countries, economies, people have lost jobs and livelihoods have been lost. People uh, have lost loved ones. So how do we pull through? I choose to think our adversity quotient has to be at its highest because stress level in this season, I think if you are to measure that in, in this decade, and uh, probably the last many years, our stress levels, stress levels in this season has been the highest ever. So, um, and stress is something that we go through, you know, you expect, you know, when your expectations are not met. And I think a lot of us are heartbroken in many ways. And as we, as we just go through this session, I, I want us to open it up a little bit and just ask ourselves, uh, how, how, how are you feeling? How are you feeling now? Uh, what are the, some of the emotions you're going through? Yeah, we could probably mention, I could open it up and a few of us can just say, how, what are they feeling? Uh, what are we feeling also in light of what was said? And I, I know this affects us directly as, as teens because one or the other, all of us are in school, whether it's in college, or high school, or we are in school. And therefore, this particular pronouncement that was made by our CS is affecting us. It means all of us will stay in our same class. 2020 is null and void in terms of academics. Many of us are struggling with that. That's the reality. So let's say that is the reality. So what are our emotions? What are, how are we feeling? Maybe I just want to hear from a few of us. Uh, I'll open it up. As I said, um, we can you know, just discuss. Let's talk a bit. As I know, time is running, but let's just talk a bit. And then we'll see. So Catherine, uh, briefly, uh, what are your feelings? How, how, when you receive this news, or even just trying to, you know, it's, it's almost like an, uh, uh, um, you know, you've been waiting for this thing, then you feel so disappointed. So how are you feeling based on the news that came out last week on all of us not going to school this year until next year? What are your um, feelings? Like? Um, at first, I was very disappointed. Mm -hmm. Mm, and I was looking forward to finishing school next year, but we just have to be positive and move on. And yeah, it's fine. Uh -huh. You just have to. Mm -hmm. So you felt disappointed, which is normal. And I need to say that's very normal. And then you picked up yourself. You're picking up yourself still and saying, okay, well, I was looking forward to finalizing. Oh, you, this year, you mean you, you supposed to be writing your exams this year? You were. Yeah. I was supposed to do oh, them. Because you're supposed to be going to fourth form next year. Yeah. Sorry, just say that again. I can't chase all. Yes, I was supposed to. Cut. I was supposed to finish. <clears throat> I was supposed to finish school next year. Aha, uh -huh, next year. So that means you'll be in school for another 2021 and 2022. I think it's, it is important to just understand that. Talk to yourself, say, oh, so this is what I'm, I'll be going to. Because at times when we run away from our feelings, it's not, it's not the best place to be. It's just, that's why at this session, I would have loved us to talk a little more and just express how do we feel about the situation we're facing now. The fact that you... For the, some of us will have to, all of us will have to repeat our classes and repeating quote unquote. But they don't carry that tag that you're repeating. So I'm, oh, I'm in the same class again. All of us are affected. So let not that thought bring you down and we'll come, uh, come to the, uh, the aspect of thought. Uh, Collins, let me pick on a, a candidate. Collins, what are your yeah. feelings? What are your emotions? How are you feeling about 
uh, currently based on what was uh, pronounced the other day by the CS. When I had the news, I was very sad because I was to finish the school this year. But now, but now, I am I am feeling like Magoa, yes, Magoa made a right decision. Okay. Or oh, you felt that, uh, you felt sad, but later on you thought and you said to yourself, Magoa made a right decision. Is that what you said? Okay, maybe you can mute your mic, but I, I suspect that's what you said, that he made a right decision. That's an interesting one. I like that. So you sat, thought about it, because you're trying to weigh uh, your health against writing the exam. And the fact that it's going to affect all of us. So I think that's an interesting one. Thank you, uh, Collins. Um, let me, who is else is a, I'm looking at, who else in this group is a candidate? I really want to hear from the candidates this year. Candidates either in, uh, our class eights are not here, right? But particularly in fourth form, who are our candidates here? Anybody a candidate? Anyway, I'll just, I'll, let me just pick any of us again to, Sure. Emmanuel Baraka. Emmanuel, are you there? Yes. So how did you feel? Or what are you feeling now? What are your emotions based on uh, uh, the fact that you will have to repeat or you'll have to do again Form 1? Um, I felt kind of bad, but it but he made the right decision because of our health. So that we cannot control the virus. Exactly. And I like that. You know, that thought, thinking that way already helps you to pull through. And I think that's, that's, that's very important. Uh, uh, thinking, you know, that's where they say your thoughts will actually affect your, 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 uh, your behavior. So, how we think uh, about uh, how we think and respond in this season any bad news will affect how we behave or how we respond so it's very important to put into context any information particularly this one that is touching on our school we need to put it into context i like what the two have said is that you know there are two options it's either we go back to school and a lot of us get sick to the point some of us may lose our lives and as CS has always said, there's no point of preparing exam for dead children, honestly. So it's better we stay at home, observe those, you know, uh, social distance rules, uh, uh, put, uh, use our face masks, just observe the things that will reduce the level of infection. And then we can still recover the lost time. If we lose your life, if you lose, any of us lose their life right now, it will be, we can't recover it but we can recover time and not know the other. So I think it's very important for us to uh, factor that in. So uh, this is just a little of some of the things that we're feeling. Anxious, tired, hopelessness, depressed, irritable, sad, eh, angry. You know, it's, and it's, it's, it's okay to feel these things. It's okay. Let's come to that place where I say, it is okay. It is okay. You should say to yourself, it is okay. And you know, just find a space and that's why I think uh, this is a problem. We need to find a way of just sitting and just talking a little more. Just express how we are feeling. Just tell, I'm so upset with this. But then, you know, process it and then tell yourself, come on, what is, what is the worst that will have happened? If I go back to school, catch this virus, stay in, in the hospital for a number of days and then lose my life. Is that what I desire? I don't think so. So we are still at slide number one. Slide number one. I'm oh, saying, sorry. All we've been seeing with slide number one. Ah, I'd moved. Oh my God. So are we, are we seeing this one? So are you seeing this slide? 
We are still, mm. we are only seeing number one. Uh -huh. Oh. Okay, the way I've moved. So, <laughs> okay, so are we able to? Let me stop sharing, then I share once again. Uh -huh. This is interesting that all through. <laughs> so, what about this one? Which one can you see now? Yeah, we can see them now. We can see now. Thank you. Oh. Okay, I've gone through all this. We're looking at all that, the deviations. Now, I'm actually at the place where we're looking at, uh, you know, our feelings. How are we feeling now? And uh, as I was saying, I just wanted to encourage us to speak out a little bit. But in the interest of time, I want us to, you know, where possible, can you spend time with your friends or your, your, the people around you? Could be your dad, your mom, and just share your feelings. Tell them how you're feeling, even if that has not taken place. Maybe some of us already gone through that, but I think we need to come to that place where we talk about it. That helps us to sort of just uh, diffuse the tension that is in us. And as I said, it is not wrong to feel bad. Uh, and as human beings, we are susceptible to all these emotions. And as, uh, the key thing is how do we overcome them? As Jesus has said, cheer up, be of good courage, I've overcome the world. In me, you'll find peace. And I just I was trying to emphasize that our AQ, which is our adversity quotient, has such a close relationship with, and maybe because we didn't see it, let me put it again. This was what I was talking about, the, the four quadrants of life. I was talking about IQ, EQ, AQ, and SQ. And my emphasis is on AQ. And that's what I was saying. Uh, research is, say, is indicating that uh, our spirituality actually affects our adversity, uh, AQ, which is ability to overcome tough situations. So you, the God factor in us, the God factor in us, we need to hold on to that. The God factor in us affects our ability to overcome uh, our situations. So, uh, um, and it's uh, actually, I'll put it this way. Um, the Bible is one of the greatest motivational books. I think all of us, like never before, need some level of motivation. And where do we find it? I know there are many books on motivation out there. There are many uh, videos that you watch or listen to and uh, from motivational speakers. And I encourage you to do that. Get some motivational speakers who can speak into your life, who can encourage you. And motivation is basically uh, helping you to cultivate a different way of thinking. Because as we said, how you think now affects your behavior. As I said, I was mentioning earlier, you know, there's this particular lady who, because of the stress, her thinking made her to commit suicide. Adversity quotient tells us that is our ability to cope with situation, coping mechanism, our resilience is, 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 is so important. And I, while I was trying to highlight the bit of spirituality and uh, uh, adversity quotient, I, when I read that, I was so impressed that our adversity quotient and spirituality, they are interfaced. Or they are, it's one and the same thing. One is the same side, one side or the other, or the coin. Two sides of, uh, one side is your ability, uh, your adversity quotient, the other side is your spirituality. So your spirituality basically affects your ability to, to respond and pull through, come out as an overcomer. So it means we need to take our spirituality very important, the God factor. And that's why I'm putting out some of these scriptures. Let's spend time meditating upon the scriptures. I like, you know, there are a number of scriptures that can actually help you. You know, they say Proverbs 20, in Proverbs 12, 25, and that in the heart of a man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. A good word. Where does this good word come from? Word of God will always give us some very encouraging words. Example, Ephesians 3, 20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that works within us. Imagine that. You know, when you're so much in distress, you're wondering, what am I going to do next? Sit on the word. Just take God's word. He says, Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, be strong and courageous. Come on. The same thing that Jesus said, you have to be courageous. You have to cheer up cheer up in me you'll have peace and you because i've overcome be strong and courageous do not be afraid or be terrified because of them of course this is what he was talking about to the israelites uh when the egyptians were 
uh, running after them or following them. Or the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That should be so uh, comforting to your, your, your thinking, to your being, that God is with me. Even in this tough time, in this season, when you're being told, I have to do my, I have to sit again the same class. Well and good, but I'll stay strong and courageous. So basically, what I'm trying to say is we need to keep meditating upon God's word. Because it, the words in the scripture, they are life. And this, as you think about them, as you meditate upon them, they will give you some level of encouragement. Remember, a bad word will cause this depression, will cause anxiety. But a good word will make your heart glad. Where is the good word? Again, I'll say, is God's word. So meditate on some of the scriptures. Meditate on them. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can overcome this because he has overcome on my behalf. I'm strong. He's saying, like, for example, Psalm 31, verse 24, be strong. Let your heart take courage. All you wait on the Lord. So waiting on the Lord. All these scriptures, you meditate upon them because it's so important. In fact, the last scripture, and I think this is something we've, we've seen before. It's a function of what is in your inside. A deflated ball, a lot of us feeling deflated, will not be able to bounce back. Because as a man thinks, so is he. So you, our thinking, every pressure that we, we go through, some sort of pressure that we go through, it, it, in one or the other affects our thinking. And our thinking will affect our behavior. So we need to address our thinking level, our thinking capacity. How, what am I thinking? The Bible itself is saying you're thinking. You are what you think. You're a product of your thoughts. And I like it when he says, be careful how you think. Your life is shared by your thoughts. I know there are many versions of talking about different, that talk about it uh, differently, but I love this version that talks also, be careful how you think. It means there's a level of control that God has given us where you can say, no, this thought, this sadness, this emotion, I can overturn it and put a new thought. And the new thought could be your, the scriptures. What situation are you facing? Are you feeling discouraged? It says, cast all, are you feeling anxious? Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Even that thought itself should encourage us in this season. Should give us some hope. Should help us to pull through. And I pray that God will help us to pull through. Will use his word as our anchor. In the storms, our anchor will be, will be his word. We'll just pull through. We will speak to ourselves. We go in front of the mirror and say, come on, Elijah. You can do all things. You can do. You can overcome this season. Uh, Baraka, you can do it. Uh, you know, let's let's cultivate that that habit of just influencing or changing the way we think. When the emotions are raging, anxiety is raging, the storms are raging. Sit, sit on the word. Just uh, speak to yourself. Pick a word. Some of the motivational verses that are there. Speak to yourself. Encourage yourself. Let your mind just imbibe and just simmer, you know, let these things just simmer in your thoughts and in your words. And before long, you begin to have some level of joy. You'll be able to, you know, those words will cultivate some level of joy and gladness in, in you. So I pray that this encouragement comes to us that understanding that, yes, we know there's so all this IQ, there's all these cues in our lives. The IQ, very important. The SQ, very important. EQ. But over and above all, AQ is so important because it's related to our spirituality, the God part in us. Thank you so much. I know our time is well spent. That's what I wanted to share with us. It's a, it's a session that we can continue um, discussing uh, in the next coming weeks on just how, what can we do, what else can we do to help us cultivate uh, those thoughts in our lives, the thoughts that will actually influence how we behave so that we don't take drastic and negative measures that again will affect us in one or the other. Let not be found to be the ones who are going into dirty, uh, dirty behavior. So things that will again affect our lives, but let's be found to be the people who understand that our adversity quotient is a function of my spirituality or our spirituality. And my spirituality is basically connecting with God, understanding his word, meditating upon his word, 
And as I said, it's okay to feel sad. That is, we are susceptible to these emotions. But the ability to bounce back is very important. And God, the God factor in us will actually help us to be able to pull through. Thank you so much uh, for your time. Uh, let me hand it back to uh, Teacher Gideon. Thank you. Hi, thank you so much, Teacher Elijah. Yeah, with that, I can hear you. Can you hear me, guys? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Asante, Asante, Teacher Elijah, for that. Haven't you been blessed? We still can't hear you. I think, Elijah, Elijah there is a problem with your audio. Um, uh, the rest can't also hear me. We can. We can. We can hear you. We can. Yeah. Thanks. We Thanks can. for that, guys. So, um, what we will do? We'll go into a session of praise. Uh, sorry, a session of uh, a session of uh, prayers, uh, and then we will call it a day. Yeah. Uh, You can see my screen? Yes. Yes, yes we can see it. Yes. Th thank you. It's just one screen, so don't ask for the next one. It's just this one. Eh? <laughs> uh, and this is what we'll be praying over. Um, so today, today Hekima is um, 21 years, and it's it's been a journey. Of, you know, some of us were there in the beginning. Some, actually, I, I doubt a number of us were born by the time Hekima was born. Hekima Center is old than most of us here in this session. But anyway, uh, I off to them that to, to those of us who went along the way, we are all here to celebrate the faithfulness of God. Yeah, and I just want us to uh, to have a moment of, I want us to read this scripture, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7, uh, verse 9. This is, what the, this is what the scripture says. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is, is indeed God. He's, he's the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obeys his commandments. Understand, therefore, uh, that God, uh, that the Lord is your God. He is a faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his, his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his command. You know, uh, part of the faithfulness of God is he's not swayed by feeling so today god i may wake up with with a left leg and he feels like leo si feel gideon and he treats me the way he wants no that's not god he's faithful you can see he keeps his 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 covenant up to a thousand generation it doesn't matter what uh whether one generation came and turned their back on him like we saw in the Bible, there are generations that came and even started worshiping idols. But because of the covenant he had with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob, he would still revisit them with goodness, you know? Yeah, so that's the nature of God. The nature of God is that of faithfulness, the faithful God. And we've seen that even in Hekima Center, through the moments of... Um, through, through high moments, through low moments, uh, God has remained to be faithful. And on the nature of his faithfulness, he's been faithful to us also as people in our individual capacity at the family level. God has been faithful to us. And what I want us to just do right now 
is to just give thanks to him. It's just to celebrate the faithfulness of God. Celebrate him because he's faithful, you know? And uh, I'm sure maybe you're wondering, this faithfulness of God, and we are repeating a whole year in the same class, that doesn't change. He still remains to be God. He remains to be faithful. And even when he doesn't feel like he's faithful, his word is true. He remains to be faithful, you know? Yeah, so I want us to just take a moment and um, give thanks for his faithfulness in Jesus' name. Uh, take a moment, just uh, give thanks to him. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you, Lord. We glorify you. The faithful God you are, the, the true, the truth, the truthful God you are. We bless you, we exalt you, we celebrate you, we honor you. As a minister, you've been good to us. You have watched over us for the last 21 years. You have blessed us, you have increased us, you have come through for us. Even when even when things were low, Lord, you came through and fought over our battles, oh God. We bless you because you've been good. You've been faithful. You have been faithful. You have been faithful to us. We glorify you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. And Lord, right now, even in our individual capacity, we want to bless you. We want to exalt you. We want to celebrate you because you have been good, because you've been faithful. You are faithful. Even in our faith, uh, faithlessness, oh God, You've remained to be true. You've remained faithful. You have remained faithful. You have provided for our needs. You have watered us. You have fed us. You have uh, put money even in our pockets. You have put food on our tables, clothes on our bodies, shelter over, above our heads, oh God. Even as very nice places to sleep on. What could we say? What could we ask for if not to thank you? if not to celebrate you, if not to thank you and to glorify you. Recount of those moments that have been faithful to you, moments that you feel at this time, had it not been God who was on my side, uh, I would have come to a close, but God has kept you. God has preserved you. Remember those moments and give thanks to God for them. Remember those times and tell God, God, I celebrate you for this time and that time and this time and that time. I want you to just celebrate him. Do not shy away. Do not fear. Uh, if you know truly, truly that it was God who kept you, if you know for sure that it is the Lord who preserved you, if you know for sure that it is who brought you far, exalt him, exalt him in the name of Exalt him, exalt his name forever. Yes, Lord, we glorify you. We honor you, Lord. We magnify you. You are good, Father. Good. You are good. You are good. You are good. You are good. Oh God, we love you. We exalt you. We magnify you. We magnify you. We magnify you. Ebenezer, we magnify you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Um, Amarisa, could you could you give thanks for us, please? Okay, let's pray. Yeah. Oh God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for for your faithfulness. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you that our church has been able to make it through twenty one years and that. As we go on, our church will continue to grow as well. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for all that you've done for us, for our church, for the world, oh Lord. Thank you for the people who are still alive and well. Thank you for all those that you've shown faithfulness towards them. Thank you for all of those who have been able to get well from the coronavirus. And I pray this trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The second prayer point is this. We are praying for strength. We are praying for courage. We are praying for tenacity. 